Right, I've got everything I need to begin, so let's begin. So first, I'm going to flash the SSD using Berliner Etcher. And as if by magic, there's the file ready to flash. We select the target, which will be the Kingston SSD. There it is. Make sure you click on the right one you want to use. And we're going to select. And finally, I think we can press flash. This will write the FreeBSD uh, image to the SSD because the way that it works on the Raspberry Pi is that it's uh, like a self-contained all-in-one thing. You don't have to install first. Just ready to go. It just needs to set up and expand to fill the, the size of the uh, medium you're using. So uh, it's flashing. You can use whatever you, you feel like using to uh, write to your SSD or indeed USB, but I'm using SSD. And once you've finished, we can exit that. And we'll get ready to plug it in to the Raspberry Pi 400 or whatever Raspberry Pi you're using, except 5, because I don't think FreeBSD works on 5 yet properly. So there we go. I've just plugged it in. And we shall see. It boots up. There we go. There's a U boot symbol. Very nice. Yellow submarine for all you. Beatles aficionados. And so it's booting up the SSD with FreeBSD on it. Everything goes by pretty quick. It's got a little bit of a countdown. It's not like when you install FreeBSD where you have to go through various setup menus. It's all done. You can configure after the fact, uh, after the fact. but there's no like pre-installation uh, menus. There we go. I thought I was going to get stuck on that then. Hopefully it will work. Yeah, the um, you, I'm using Ethernet because, well, you know, um, it doesn't work with the Wi-Fi chipset yet, which is a shame. And I'll show you that in a minute, because uh, the the uh, Ethernet is not plugged in. So uh, I've already run through this one, so I know, but uh, it's, it's not plugged in. So I'll, I'll show you uh, that without that, you're not going to get into Internet access, unless you stick one of your own working dongles in the back of your Pi. So there we go, there's uh, FreeBSD 15.0 release, looking good. And if we run PKG update, it's asking whether you're going to bootstrap the PKG. But yes, and it can't, because there's no internet access. So if we have a look at BSD config, uh, I know there's a shortcut back, I always forget. Uh, we go down to network management. This is a very good tool, by the way, to actually do some post install configuration. Um, if you go down to network interfaces, it'll bring up the Ethernet, but no Wi Fi. So out of the box, as it were, the Wi Fi is not uh, working. There has been a lot of, uh, yeah, there's no Wi Fi card. There's been a lot of work to improve the Wi Fi stack for FreeBSD, but unfortunately, it doesn't uh, yet go to the um, Raspberry Pi 4 or 400. So I'm going to plug in the Ethernet cable. You can't see me doing it, but I'm doing it now. And we'll go back to network management. And we should have network interface now. It'll come up with Ethernet. And yeah, there we go. I'm not using GCMs, that looks fine. And we'll restart the interface. Let's check all the various things. Name servers, we need to add the name server. I'm going to change the uh, host name. I'm going to change it to test, just so I don't get confused. And put yes. You don't have to change it. You can leave it if you wish. But I just like to change it. And is there anything else we need to do? Not for now, now. Okie dokie then. So, now if we ping the uh, venerable Google, it will, yeah, there's the 5.9. Yeah, okay, that's that's fairly decent for my internet. So now we can issue PKG update, which will bootstrap and pull in uh, the latest package tree. Install in PKG. All done. So, right, so now we can get uh, working on this. If we issue PKG upgrade, I wouldn't imagine that there's going to be many uh, candidates, but we'll do it anyway. And there are none because we haven't really installed anything and it's brand new out of the image. 
Speaking of which, we will install what we need for a nice desktop. So I'm going to pkg install xorg. Yeah, I'm not going to try Wayland. I'm not a Wayland person. Um, so I'll just leave this to download. Right, we're all done. So next we need to install a desktop. So I, ooh, what shall we pick? I will pick something light but capable. XFCE. It's always XFCE, isn't it? Yeah, we're going to play uh, XFCE and we'll pull that down. Again, it'll uh, take a while, so I'll fast forward. Mm, nearly, there we are. And lastly, I'm going to install a browser. I know people say, well, you, you could have done it all in one line. I could have done, but, you know, I like to, so like, in my own mind, methodically go through each step. If I don't, I'll forget something. Right, so once that's done, we're going to clear the screen, and I'm going to start tweaking a few things to make the Raspberry Pi a bit more responsive. First, we're going to list uh, a directory called boot, and that contains a lot of important files for configuration, and within that, there is a little directory called ms-dos, and in that, there is a very important file called config.txt. So, instead of listing, I'm just going to, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm a bit of a shortcut here, but you don't have to do it this way. You can type it out full if you want. I'm just going to type, config.txt at the end, and instead of ls, I'm going to edit, and uh, there you go. That's a convoluted way of doing it. So we just scroll down, and one of the things we're going to change is the text at the moment is very large, which is very useful for making a video and seeing what's happening, but not good if you want uh, proper scaling on your proper desktop. So we're going to change that to zero. You could, put, uh, you could hashtag it out if you want, but zero is probably best. And underneath, I'm going to put force underscore turbo, I'm going to, so allows the Raspberry Pi to full, uh, run at full speed. Uh, I'm going to over vault, um, over voltage the system so I can overclock it. You don't have to do any of this. Perhaps the HDMI safe is probably the only thing that you want to do, but I want to do this on my Pi because I know it can take it. I'm going to arm frequency at 2147 and GPU frequency at 750. And I'm going to save and we're going to reboot. And when we do, you should immediately see a difference because we got rid of the uh, HDMI safe. But you won't notice a speed increase, but I will. Anyway, we're going to reboot. And as you can instantly see, everything is smaller. Now it's to proper scale now. Things will look better on your desktop. If you didn't have the, if you didn't make that HDMI safe change, your icons will be too big. It just, it wouldn't look good. Trouble is, I have to zoom in now. And it doesn't look good from the point of view. So, uh, and I'm also filming this with my camera, so, um, yeah. So, because uh, I'm zooming in, things look grainy, and uh, if you can't see what I'm typing in, I'll put some text on screen. Ah, I forgot, I haven't set up a user yet. So, the default user for FreeBSD on Raspberry Pi is root, and the password is also root, which is fantastic. Don't forget to change them later. So now that we're in a semi-configured, we're going to add a user, which will be very useful. So add user, I'm going to put in, it's the same as the process when you're doing a normal FreeBSD install. It's just done at this stage. Uh, so it's RoboNuggy, put your name, obviously, or username. Uh, login group, I'm going to put wheel, operator, and video. And default for these. And password, of course, your user password. There we go. And we're all set up. We don't need another user. And we should be done. I'm going to exit and log in to my newly created user. And now it should work, of course. There we go. Which is a lot better. It's a lot safer, I think, if you're not just using that. I'm now going to edit the xnitrc file. So we can get the xfce desktop book going so it's going to exec start xfce4 of course if, if you put a different desktop in it would be a different command and start x there we go and we've got a nice desktop on raspberry pi 400 and things do feel very smooth it's not using gpu acceleration of course but for now, things look, look good and feel, and feel quite fluid, which is, which is good. Which is, you, want, you want that as a desktop. And there's 
Firefox. I've always had an issue with uh, FreeBSD on the Raspberry Pi before. Firefox would always crash or was very unstable. Um, let's see if they have sorted it out. Well, it's looking good so far. That was always the main thing that prevented me from using FreeBSD as a desktop on the Raspberry Pi 400 was the fact that the, 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 it would always crash for no reason. So we'll see. We'll have a look at some... We'll, we'll, test the, uh, we'll test the browser's capability in a minute. Yeah, we'll have a look at some WebGL. Should test things. I mean, I know we're not using uh, GPU, so we'll see how it handles that. Oh, secure connection failed. Okay. That's not so good. Um, we'll have a look at another one. Our computer clock is... Oh, because it doesn't have a CMOS battery. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, we're going to have to change the time because um, we haven't configured automatic time synchronization at boot up, which means that the, the system's going to be wrong every time you start up if you shut it down. Okay. Let's go into the command line and let's change a few things. We're going to issue a root BSD config again. And but this time, instead of networking, we're going to go to that as time zone. We're just going to make sure time zone is set up. And this is, like say, it mirrors normal installation of FreeBSD on uh, x86 systems, just to make sure the time zone's set up. Uh, we don't need to change anything else, do we? Um, nah. Now we'll come out of that. There's the date. And to change the date now, um, if you put 2025, 12, 08, 16, 32, 30. So it's basically saying it's half past four on uh, Monday, December the 8th. It's a long winded way of doing it, but it'll bring us time back up and things should start working. There we go. There's WebGL, which is good. It's actually quite smooth. It's not too bad. And we'll go back to um, the previous page that got insecure connection or whatever it was. And now it works, you see. So to where is there? Down to the fact that it was the wrong time. Okay. And the browser seems to be handling it quite well, so it's not crashed yet, which is a, a plus. Click on this one. I think things will struggle a little bit on this, but we'll see. It's very... Ooh. Is it going to do it? It's doing it. Barely. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. It's not a massive... Uh, number of fish there but and it's going at what seven fps do you know that's fine i'm i'm not disappointed because i know that FreeBSD does have issues with uh it's not going to get the same level of performance as linux on raspberry pi but it's good enough and you could still use this as a desktop i don't know about anything else like video editing but you know for basic desktoping it will do fine Right, so now we're going to install, talking about basic desktop, we're going to install LibreOffice. So if we can't play games or, or anything like that, let's get some work done. So we're going to pkg install LibreOffice and get downloading. Of course, as always, it will take a while, so we'll fast forward. And we're all installed. Go up to the menu, and it should. Yeah, auto populate. And there's LibreOffice and LibreOffice Writer. And I'm not going to speed this up. But that's not too bad. Performance wise, fairly good. Next on that, first time. Uh, I forgot about this configuration when you first start LibreOffice up now. Uh, I'll come back to that later. And of course, we need to type in the obligatory hello and make it large. And there we go. Yeah, works fine. Looks good. Everything is nice and crisp. And uh, although it doesn't look it on your video, it to me, it looks nice and crisp. And still fluidly smooth, which is uh, quite impressive. I think uh, so a lot of the, the problems I had in previous times trying to get this to be a substitute desktop, I think a lot of the issues have gone. The Wi-Fi thing could be improved, of course. And just to show for those who may want to see how things are chugging along, here's HTOP. Yep, not bad. We get uh, just under 4 gigabytes of memory, and we're just consuming about 2.5 gigabytes of that. Yeah, 
Okay, that'll do fine. Like I say, for uh, basic desktop use, I think that this will be more than more than capable. Just no video editing and probably no major heavy games or anything like that. Uh, although you could, I think I've had done, I'm sure I did video editing on this before. I can't remember. Anyway. Yeah, so uh, things have improved. Uh, FreeBSD 15 runs very nicely on the Pi. Pi 400, not the Pi 5 or 500, because I don't think FreeBSD... Re I could be wrong on this, but I don't think really it's supported all that well on the latest Pis, because they, they changed the chipset for the uh, for the GPU, and uh, it took it took FreeBSD many years as it is to get used to the, the old one. The Wi-Fi issue, a little bit of a disappointment, although, you know, I mean, it's, you know, just half of the course now but yeah so very good uh, a nice experience and it runs very well and it's got me thinking about perhaps using it more uh, on the Raspberry Pi for the very low power consumption anyway if you find this video useful then please give it a like uh, if you find more than one of my videos useful then please consider subscribing and if you do subscribe then please hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos these videos are not monetized. I make these videos for the love of FreeBSD and making videos. If you do want to support me, then please share this video. Leave a comment down below. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.